just be prepared because I'm going to start gaining your, you know, your, your trust. Oh. Yes, and then I'm just going to absolutely shatter it one day. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, at least it gives me time to actually properly send out a tweet and see if anyone will join up through there. Okay, where is that J.C. Blackley? I mean, he's only four minutes past. It's not the worst thing in the world, but... It says he's booting up F1. Oh my goodness. Blackly, blackly, blackly. There he is. Okay, okay. Now we can get it going here. Under the lights here in Monaco. I had to wait for the young man of JC Blackley to get into his Alfa Romeo. He was on his way home from swimming lessons. I'd like to imagine. Where do you think he was coming <laughs> home from, Jacko? <laughs> Uh, probably the, uh, the Alfa Romeo team base, you'd have to imagine. Oh. It'd be kind of weird how they wouldn't Don't have... come in the simulator? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, getting in that late extra practice. Okay, that sounds good. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna go with mine. I think that's fun. I think that's funnier. Probably more realistic, too. Oh, there you go. Jacko with one. That's a... Those are rare. Those are rare. The Jacko, the Jacko <laughs> chirp. Usually they, they come a lot, you know, faster and more furious from myself, the chirps. I do enjoy ripping on people in this league. It keeps entertaining for me. Is that something I have to look into and perhaps stop my game on? A bit of chirping? Yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you might you might find uh, some enjoyance from it, honestly. It's, uh... It it, it it makes yourself feel better bringing others down. <laughs> I prefer to do that on track, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> well, you're in the booth now. They can't get you out of here. Oh, good. For now. Yeah. At least yeah. until the F2 comes around. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's going to be a long time until we go proper live. So I don't think it's going to be years to come for when we're actually driving in the streets of Monaco and interviewing drivers down <laughs> by the water after, so... You should be safe for a little while. So get them all out now, and then rue the day when you actually have to talk to these guys face-to-face. In five years' time, when we're co-commentating in real life at Monaco, and I push you into the pool. Oh, I'd love that. 
As long as you give me some champagne on my way down, I'll be happy. Champagne. I mean, that, that, that would be a dream come true, right? yeah, <laughs> even involving well, the pool. Yeah, 100%. Monaco <laughs> is 100% on the bucket list. Whether it being, or with it being, you know, like somewhat of a, yeah, I don't want to say a boring race, but it's just, it's just, it's just the way that the track is built out. It, it's not meant for my, much passing. The, the pit game really comes into play. So I think having watched historic Monaco recently, you see just how much wider the current cars are, and it, oh, it yeah. was possible to pass back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it's just a function of the cars, I think. Yeah. So maybe if the rule change in the future makes them a bit narrower, we may see the return of um, you know a bit more side by side around here. But yeah. I would love to see a night race in real life around here. I'm not sure how realistic that is, but they got street lights, so I don't see why not. Yeah, true. I mean. It looks looks spectacular from just our viewing pleasures right now, and that's in a video game. Imagine what it'd look like in real life on TV or even being there. It'd just be a completely different and surreal experience. Sure would. We're going to enjoy this properly, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, oh, hey, welcome to the Thursday night edition of the Midwest F1 League. Division 1 action here from Monaco, as you could hear Jack and I discussing leading up to this little intro that we got i myself of course crash mcqueen and i am joined by of course uh my now more familiar co-commentator elma jacko division two champion won't you say hello tonight hey 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 hold up a second division two champion what do you mean and division, division one two division season two i meant to say season two <laughs> man All I, right. I told you it was a long day today okay you're lucky i even like made it that far without stumbling over my words <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Crash. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here once again in the commentary box, third time now, and uh, already watching some qualifying laps here in Monaco. So you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable now in the in, the, in the, up in the booth. Oh, for sure, it's a lot more comfortable. We're not having to worry about any of the um, the walls or anything like that in particular at this track. No stress whatsoever. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, Saffron City was having to worry early on actually hitting the outside of turn three and already having to go in for a wing change. So he was initially the first guy out on track, but was also the first guy back in the pit after leaving the track so early. So he has Kenny's shoes to fill and he's already filling them much like Kenny would with the 13 wings of last season, I think it was. Oh and my. several penalties to come if that's the case. <laughs> There you go. So let's see if that's to happen here. It looks like Mystic nearly hit the wall around the swimming pool section. But Yeah, Mystic, I mean, you have to get close to the wall, though. That is the objective in qualifying. Props not on the first lap. Maybe you want a banker, as we'll see what he does here. A 9.5 is a great banker. I know that he can go quicker than that, though. I'm expecting a low 9 or a high 8 for pole here. Last season, I think we had a 9.0 by, by Honda. Um... Myself, I think I did a 9.6, so this is already quicker than me, but Mystic did a 9.3. Mystic was, of course, on the front row last season as well. So we'll see if he can emulate last season's pace, if not go quicker. Uh, do, do, do. Got Jinnit trying to fly down the order if you want to kind of catch everyone up on where the drivers are coming over the line here. Okay, so it looks like these guys are doing bankers, honestly. 12s, nothing too flash. I need to get that track map up, actually. Okay, so we've got a McLaren coming over now. It's Enrique, he goes ninth. I think these are all bankers, to be honest, though, Crash. Yeah. Um, and it, it's one of those tracks that you really have to set a banker, otherwise you start going, you know, 100% or slightly over that 100%. And you find yourself in the wall, and all of a sudden you don't have a lap, or you know your wheels off, or you've cut a corner. You don't want to be down the grid too far at this track, that's for sure. Front two rows, and you've got a good chance. That's the the main thing that these guys have to be attempting. Yeah, it's the it's Definitely a battle in the for wall again. Ouch. For sure, it's a battle of survival here, and it's a different view. Actually, we we have yet to mention um, Pork Chops is actually stepping into the Haas seat after dropping himself down into Division Two, and that second uh, Renault spot is taken up by Matt Rosie there. On his uh, oh, and Sephron City hits the wall, coming around turn seven there. Oh, 
we're actually seeing a couple of these guys, including Jin, as you just mentioned, and Matt Rosie, uh, setting multiple laps on the same set of tyres. This is one of the few tracks that that is, well, possible is not the right word, but, um, you know, it goes with the strategy. You don't need to, uh, to save the tyre that much around here because mm. you need to get the track position. It's more important to use the tyre for qualifying than for the race. It doesn't wear that much more in the second lap, honestly. And, oh, Matt Rosie losing the rear through Pissen. And um, he did make contact with the wall, but I think he's going to pit here and, uh, yeah, replace the wing. So, of course, Matt Rosie, he won the two Division Two races he competed in this season, two out of two, before um, being promoted. Is that correct? Uh, I can go back and check real quick here. Okay. I'm familiar with this, this um, competitor. I've raced him elsewhere, and um, he's certainly no slouch. He gives me a run for my money, so I think he, my prediction is he'll get a podium at some point this season, if not many. Uh, perhaps not tonight, I don't know how strong he is at Monaco, but he's a strong driver, that's for sure. Mm, okay. So yeah, he did go two for two to start the uh, season three of Division Two there. Uh, it looks like next over the line and first uh, time to be set is by Super Ninas here. He's been ever so slightly improving week to week as it seems, and uh, Maybe he might be on for a good qualifying here in Monaco. Let's see how comfortable he is. He's just finishing up the final couple turns. He's coming down the pit straight right now, just about to come over the line, and he will find himself in 14th. So, yeah, a banker for sure. Absolutely. One of those drivers yet to set a time, and the banker was always the first thing to do. Although, is he out of fuel? No, it doesn't look like it. Just some strange revving going up towards Massonet there. On an in lap, it looks like. So Sephron, Bacon, and Blackley yet to set laps, but Blackley's still in the pits, um, potentially having just got home, of course, um, still requiring some things set up. Potentially drying off from the pool, still not wanting to get his setup wet. <laughs> or he might have chlorine in his eyes. And oh, what do we got around turn one there? Looks uh, like it is a racing point. It's random serious, facing the wrong way. Hopefully he can get out of this situation without being disqualified. This is something that befell my teammate last season. Yeah, wing off as well. Um, you know, facing the wrong way in qualifying, you can't get in the way of people. And he's, mm. he's done it. Well, I think congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I think he blocked Mystic Joker's hot lap, though. Oh, that was very tight. Was that Yolmir? It was certainly a McLaren threading the way between the stricken uh, racing point and I think it was a Red Bull, I couldn't quite tell. Was, yeah, Enrique and um, oh, it Enrique, NBC sorry. Barry, yeah. Yeah, well we missed in fact that uh, Mystic has improved to a 9-0, that time actually does eclipse the time set last season for pole by Honda, so we've already seen a, a lap record in that regard. Um, Hopefully, for Mystic's sake, the, uh, the five-race-long streak of pole sitter not winning doesn't come true for him, although he has won three in a row, uh, including the season finale last season. Oh, as Enrique did, slightly taps the wall there. Uh, Matt so, Rosie uh, has gone purple through Sector 1, but yeah, continue. Oh, Matt Rosie, yeah, very nice. Okay, I was just saying that one of the streaks is bound to end at some point. Oh, random, getting back to the pits. Well fails to get back to the pits. Where has that happened? At Tabac, the exit of Tabac. Yeah. Yellow flags for a Williams and a Mercedes. Ooh, and oh, and... Oh, it's Jin. <laughs> oh, that was close. That was Stephon really Jin. close. They barely that avoided that. That so much of what happened last season on lap six or something with Honda and Monkey um, making contact with the barriers at Tabac. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Very unfortunate incident there. Um, yeah, <laughs> shades of the same thing. But as you said, Matt Rosie was purple, goes third. So uh, must be a very strong well, our second and third sector for Mystic if that was the case. So Helg is currently eight, ten, yeah. hmm. Helg is currently three tenths down on his time, 
if he can find some time in this last sector here, he has a shot at pole position. Oh, we get some overseer coming out of the final turn there of 19 down the pit straight and does take four tenths off. But, oh, actually, no, sorry, he was way off pace. I was mixing up a nine and a ten. So, yeah, just barely missing out on the one tenths. He got a little too overexcited. Here we go, Kate. Okay, so he's still up to fourth, though, which is a grand effort by the Alpha Tauri driver. Cake improves up into 11th. His teammate just behind, really up on his time right now, and in 14th. Pork chops next over the line is set to put over a better time and does still in, or stays in 17th. Zayolmir. Yolmir does does improve. Yeah, that was yeah. very slight amounts though. He was actually out of uh, ERS for a long portion of that final straight out of Anthony Nodes, so perhaps not the ideal deployment on that lap. I know that it is one of those tracks that you can choose to toggle the ERS off at a more optimal point and uh, re-engage it. So you get that runs the line, but of course, you know, the more bottle buttons you fiddle with at this track, the uh, perhaps the worse you are prepared in, in yourself. I'm seeing a lot of drivers right now struggle uh, coming out of uh, the final two turns there of Anthony Nodes. Uh, is that normally a place where you find yourself as well to struggle with oversteer? Uh, personally, I prefer my setups to be a bit more understeery, so that's not really a problem for me. Um, although, avoiding that curb on the left can be key to a good lap time, and if you turn a bit too hard to avoid it, then you can promote that understeer, uh, sorry, oversteer, which uh, may be what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. the, the, more, more, the corners that I struggle with the most are, in fact, the hairpin and even um, to back. You just have to turn in at the right point to get the right lap to get the lap time out of it and that's so difficult as blackley retires where is that it's still he never never even left the pit oh does he have the qualifying ban ah oh, that's right mm. forgot about that entirely okay so responsibly done there by blackley um so that leaves bacon as the only driver yet to set a lap time who is uh, allowed to He's on an outlap at the moment, which is very invalid because he just completely cut the Nouvelle Chicane. Um, so, actually, it might be... Yeah, no, this was a time lap, but he already invalidated it. Probably be going again momentarily, although not much ERS, so probably get a pit, actually, into the pits he goes. So, with only four minutes left, basically, when he gets out of the pits, maybe less. Not set a lap time yet. Not ideal. You do not want to be at the back of this track. So Sephron still looking to improve on his time, currently sitting at a 117, a very much of a get me over kind of lap. That's at least going to save him from not starting 20th, to be fair. Uh, on is out, somewhat struggling through the final couple turns of the pool section there. Who are you on board with there? <laughs> <laughs> Hash. He uh, just um, made contact with the wall uh, through the Exeter swimming pool and uh, enters the pits. I mean, I'm trying to figure out who's out of position here, and other than Bacon, without that lap time obviously, I think Hash and Jin are a bit lower than we expect them to be. Of course, Mayo set pole position last week in sixth at the moment, so maybe those three guys you can be looking to improve in this last run. Um, as for the rest, you know, it's, it's actually all quite close in the midfield, a lot of 11s, a lot of 10s, and then some guys perhaps who've... Um, struggled so far with their lap times. I believe uh, Sui just improved onto 11th there and once again Saffron City going too deep through Portier and hits the wall and he's got a little bit of wing damage right now. Oh Spaceman says it's raining in Div 3. Wow. A night so race that was under... really tough there for Sui. He got a bit of a, a balk. It definitely wasn't intentional but I couldn't even catch who that was. They went down the escape road, but uh, the distraction, not wanting to run into them if they haven't seen you, he's probably lost a bit of lap time there. Of course, the uh, the younger brother of the championship leader, Sweet. 
Sephron does improve on his time, but still sitting in 18th. Many of the front runners in the pits still at this stage. They have time to get out, but they'll probably only get one lap in. Which is optimal, I guess, but uh, doesn't give you the most opportunity to improve. Matt Rosie invalidates his lap. Didn't look like he was up anyway. He'll have one more attempt, it looks like. He's definitely got enough ERS, should have enough fuel. Mayama also on an invalid lap. He'll probably also have the same one more attempt. You said Matt Rosie invalidated? Yeah, he's about to start a new lap now. Okay, okay. Through St. Devot fairly cleanly. May have shaded the wall there, but it's probably the quickest way through, actually, unless it damaged the wing. Mystic lets him through, but he wasn't able to avoid the bump on the way down to Mirabeau. Still looking fairly quick. Doesn't get the apex of Portier though. Maybe only able to get second out of this, if he's up that is. A mm. couple of retirements happening, Nikki and Super Ooh, Nina. Impossible launches all the way up to sixth with his first time set. I had intel that he was pretty quick around here, but I was worried for him with those um, no lap times. There was a purple sector there I saw flashed up for Matt, but I'm not sure if that's the game lying to me or not. Either way, he's coming through the final turn now. I might get a bit of a slipstream from Pork Chops, who's just starting his lap. Out of ERS. It's an improvement, but three tenths off. And Pork Chops pulls off at St. Devot. Jin retires. Where is Jin? Eighth. That's a bit low for Jin. I would have expected a bit more. And ninth now, actually, as... Is that Smith Pell improving? To see... Oh my goodness, there's a crash! <laughs> there's a crash at Casino Square. Get on board with Smith Pell if you can. You be, might be able to see this. There's Jin in the wall. There was a McLaren facing directly towards him uh, prior to disappearing. Uh, I think that would have been Yolmir. Did they come together? That's the question. Ooh, Hash can move himself potentially into six here. He's on a pretty good lap. Doesn't get any oversteer around the final couple turns here, so he comes over the line and only moves into tenth. Must have not gained as much time as needed. Did you Impos catch that incident? No, I didn't. Not at all. Ah, I was, that's unfortunate. I was trying to focus on the drivers coming around the final turn. There was a big crash at Casino involving two cars, at least. I think no, Mystic is done. He just completed a lap time that was uh, under a tenth off his own time, but was not an improvement. Matt is in the pits. Mayo yeah, that, is invalid. Yeah, that's all she wrote for times here. It's going to stand yeah, as Mario as is. Saying. Damn. So, su surprises for you, Crash? Oh, you well, think? the obvious one is Jin all the way down in 10th. That's, 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 that's somewhat beyond imaginable, honestly. That guy is fast, and to see him starting in 10th, it just, qualifying just did not go his way. Well, anything can happen at Monaco, and it certainly looks like it has happened for a couple of these guys. I think Hash, I would have expected to be a bit higher than 12th as well. Um, looking at that leaderboard, I believe that's the best we've seen Smith Pell do in Division 1, 7th place. Fantastic qualifying by both AlphaTauris, actually, 5th and 7th. Um, the second constructor currently in the points, also up there, both in the top 6, with Mayo and Random, 4th and 6th. But running down the order, we've got Mystic on pole once again, Matt Rosie in second on his debut in Division 1, Yolmir for, for McLaren in third, followed by Mayo, Helg, Random Smith as we just said, Bacon jumping up late in the session to 8th, Enrique and Jin, Jin actually with a 5 position penalty which we didn't pick up on, 
-hmm. possibly for that collision that I noted towards the end of qualifying. So he'll be starting in 15th. Then we've got Cake, Hash, Hay Tight, Barry, Swee, Nikki, Super Ninas, Pork Chops, Sephron, and JC Blackley rounding out the field without having set a time after the penalty he incurred. So. Are, if you're wow. in the back 10 here, are you starting on hards? Um, that's a good question, Crash. A lot of these guys may benefit from doing so, and you know they might choose to do so. I I don't think that would be my preference if I was starting at the back. I would always I always start these races on the softest compound possible, um, just to get them out of the way because they're not usually the race tire. If there's a safety car early, you're stranded, and you only get one set of the the hard tire, one or two sets of the medium. So I don't think it's ever advisable to start on anything other than the soft. I got gotcha. you. there's rain on the horizon, that is. Okay. So, there's personal preference is what you're saying in the end. Basically. Obviously, if you're the one driver on a different compound, that could that could help you if there's a stra strategic um, element coming into the play, whether that be rain, safety cars, or anything like that. It's a risk. But for my personal preference, especially at Monaco, you've got to start on the soft, because the chance of damage is so high early on that you you, you need the other tyres for flexibility of strategy. Okay, I've got you. So we'll have to see how it plays out. What It's just so much, it's just very much in the air. <laughs> Simply put, like, you have no idea what is going to take place. You imagine there's going to be a safety car, but if you don't see one, then bravo to all the drivers here, but we, it's there's going to be some sort of factor come in play here today and I, I'm I'm excited to see what's to come here from these drivers and how they're going to deal with it. Do you, well, that was a very... Do you notice that there's always a no smoking sign in Monaco on the pit straight or on the pit entrance <laughs> I there? I had not noticed that. Yeah. But I do now. <laughs> Isn't it very there? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the... the the director of the of the game chose this angle specifically to show that. Yeah, I swear <laughs> to God, I've never noticed that. That's, That's so funny. That's a good fun. message to be getting out in games, at least. <laughs> now, is that on the is that on every pit lane that I've never noticed, or is that just Monaco? We're going to be looking for that every week from now on. I guarantee oh, you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like our Where's Waldo of of signs. Oh, it's I didn't realize it was Waldo in Canada as well. For for us in Australia, it's called Wally. Where's Wally? Where's Wally? Hmm. Hmm. I believe for most of the world, other than Australia, um, America and Canada, it's Wally. Really, Wally? Yeah. Where's Wally? Huh. Did you wear the same stuff? Yeah. Uh, otherwise identical. Well then. Why Wally? Because Waldo and... is just not a name. <laughs> like, who's called Waldo? <laughs> who's called Wally? Wallace. It's short for Wallace. <laughs> yeah, but... Like Wallace and Gromit. So... Uh, I just... That's... <laughs> okay. That's a conversation for a different day. I'm absolutely <laughs> rattled by that. Alright, well... well it's, that's the what you get for having a commentary team from around the world. You get a bit of um, outside knowledge, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. But here, quickly as we'll... We go into the formation lap here. I'll go over the pre-race questions. That what has become some sort of tradition here. So, firstly, I started off with. So, when we finish up Monaco, someone name these first three tracks to be the most ruthless opener to a season. That being Canada, Bahrain, Short, and Monaco. Uh, in your opinion, what would your best three tracks to start a season? We'll start with Maomir. First answered was Russia, France, Netherlands. What do you take of those three tracks? Me personally, I, I I don't think Russia deserves a place on any calendar, but the rest of them, fantastic. <laughs> okay, Cake actually went a little bit outside the box and went Bahrain, Portimao, and Australia. Oh, that's a decent decent choice. Portimao yeah. will be interesting on the next game. Yeah, yeah, and another Zandvoort from Impossible Bacon going Bahrain and Zandvoort and either Singapore or Brazil. Oh, I like that. that yeah, sounds delicious. 
Yeah. And then the second question I went into was, do you think you'd come up with an F... Okay, so here, this is a good question. Do you think you could come up with an F1 track? And if so, what track would it be similar to? So I'll go to JC Blackley. He says, yes, it would be like Singapore's uh, scenic-wise because of how beautiful it looks, but I would make it as much track-wise as I could, like Brazil. So an interesting combination there. I don't think that there's going to be any sort of cities that have that kind of, like, up and down and, and race flow, but still being aesthetically be beautiful. You can argue Baku. Very optimistic young man. Blackley yeah. Is there. <laughs> yeah, extremely. But we're about to get into it here. We've got Mystic Joker leading in the way. Matt Rosie in his debut in second, followed by Yolmir and Mayomir, the two LFR drivers on the second row. Mystic with the inside line into turn one. Let's see what he can do. The lights are out, and it looks like Yolmir gets off really well. Matt Rosie actually gets a poor start, and he's going to be into third, going into the turn around the outside line. Yolmir looks like he's got him. And yeah, Yolmir does, and we got the two BWTs racing up into Massinet, and I'm not exactly sure. I think that's random series. No, Mayomir was able to get the better of his teammate and has third place as of right now. Some positions are being moved, but I'm getting the lobby time glitch, so I'm not exactly sure what is being as moved around. Yeah. yeah, but it looks like we got the two Alpha Tories in behind, as well as a Merc. I'd imagine that being impossible bacon and a VSC Virtual right out of the gate. Got lots of penalties. The the last four drivers all have penalties, as does Enrique. I'll have to get up the exact type of penalty if I can. They're all five second penalties, so they'll be served under pit stops, I imagine, for collisions under virtual safety car. Mm -hmm. All of those, I can imagine, people will be very unsatisfied with. Um, Codemasters not doing a great job of that, that five second penalty in particular <laughs> this game. There but, he goes. What can you do? So, Random Series must have got an amazing jump as he was actually battling his teammate, as I said, up through Beau Ravage and into Massinet, turn two and three. Um, as well as overtaking Helg off the gate. Uh, Cake Thomas takes a position on Enrique, and a couple positions are swapped down the order. Jeanette taking two spots after Ooh, serving his the penalty. There. Oh, Enrique's right. in the pits, as is Cake. See, that's what I meant by Cake. Cake was the leading driver on mediums at the start of the race, and he's already in the pits, having used that set, and that's just going to be the most frustrating thing for him. Super Ninas, unfortunately, leaving the lobby as well. I, I think he, he lagged. 14. He yeah. probably lagged out if you can send him an invite. I he might do so. He might be asking for one here. I noticed Jin also made a pretty good start prior to the, um, the pit stops there. Probably were already up three positions or so, is my guess. See, now, I was gonna, I was gonna sneak something in here today, but I, um... I kind of became busy with my day, so I wasn't able to. But we're back racing green here, and I don't think there's going to be any passes anytime soon, so I can finish this this topic. But um, I was thinking about getting an exact um, guess, or get everyone in all of Midwest racing to put out a guess on how many wings are going to be changed throughout the four divisions. Oh, and Mayomir gets a little bit of oversteer there, and Random Series has to pump the brakes coming into turn 17, and it's actually Random Series getting a better run, and gets the move done on his teammate and up into fourth place. No real contest from Mayomir there, maybe accepting his team has a better pace, and oh, we've just got someone off at Nouvelle Chicane. It's a McLaren, I believe, of Enrique. Enrique. No damage. Yeah, not, things not going well for Enrique or either of the Red Bull drivers, both having already made a pit stop. Uh, that's Barry onto the hard compound tire, it looked like. Oh dear. Position Wait. change. Tire. But yeah, both drivers on the hard. Once again, Red, <laughs> Red Bull going for those hard tires, just like last week. The only two drivers Ooh. in this phase of the race on hards. We had They're not going to enjoy this phase whatsoever. We had a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing there for 10th place between Jinnit and Haytite Gaming. Jinnit's already collected five places from his initial start after three laps. He just took the Ferrari going around the Grand Hotel hairpin of turn six and finished it off going into turn seven. And he's now already breaking away and trying to close the gap to hash, and we have another car off at the Nouvelle Chicane, this time it being J.C. Blackley. Um, and we had Bacon applying a lot of pressure to Smith Pell, but Smith actually enters the pits, so 
Ooh. All the Honda engine drivers having trouble here other than Helg so far. I hope I haven't just cursed Helg. What's happening with Helg? Oh, JC's oh, retired. Is that what and we have a VSC. JC? Oh. That is at Pisan, it looks like. We got a Red Bull approaching. Hopefully they avoid it. Yeah, yeah. okay. He's off to the side on the, the hard left. Yeah. So that should be avoidable for most of these guys, I hope. Enough out of the way. The last one to clear is Saffron, and yeah, they should get that car moved. And then we'll get so our green unfortunately, light. Unfortunately, JC is our first retirement tonight, and second of the season, I, I believe, as we had everyone finish in the, round, the first round, but only one retirement last week. Mm -hmm. That was Scabney, I believe. As here we go again, the race is underway, it's green. Yolmir actually with the fastest lap so far, just three thousandths quicker than Mystic, but he is keeping Mystic, um, you know, visible. Only around, I'm going to guess a second behind, I haven't got the actual gap up. Yeah, it's actually just a second at corner, but he's going to lose a lot of time here, get some gnarly oversteer. And it, no, yeah, it makes, gnarly. it looks like he's got the straight line speed on Mystic actually, weirdly enough. Okay, that'll be interesting to keep up with if he stays close. Because the intervals, we don't have many tight battles unless mm -hmm. we go down to Nikki, who's following Super. Ah, Super's car obviously is um, AI controlled, unfortunately. So I might just keep an eye on that just in case something silly happens with that AI controlled car. Yeah, Yomir got really uh, loose coming out of the final turn and then was still able to somewhat close the gap coming down the straight here. But it looks like Mystic pulled away in the early parts of Sector 2 there, and has now nearly opened up that gap to two seconds. I think Nikki just slightly tapped the wall. I couldn't quite tell if he got damage. I'll try and get another angle, but broadcast camera's not being kind to me. Kind of looks alright, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh yeah, but yeah, going back, right. going back to my thought, um, mm. my idea was to get everyone to predict the total amount of wing changes that there would be, and then after the race, get people to message me how many there were, and then I'd add them all up, and whoever got the exact right answer, depending on your division, you need to get an extra point. <laughs> wow, <laughs> and that would That's be with, <laughs> that would be without approval of pork chops. I would just do that. And then oh dear, Enrique with the first time penalty. That's a three second of this race. Um, probably the first one that's legitimate. Uh, I think most of the guys who got those five seconds on their opening lap have served them with their pit stops, which is a quite an unfortunate way to start mm. their race. But yeah, that that was quite an interesting idea there, um, Crash. How many submissions did you get, and what are the guesses that we we saw? Oh no, see, I, I was I, I had that thought throw my head oh, while I was while I was doing my day, but then ah. as hectic as the day was, I couldn't get it. I couldn't uh, make it come. And plus, I should have oh. should have come up with the idea a little sooner. But who are you on board with here? Enrique has just turned in a bit too early through Masne and clouded the outside wall. Um, having bounced off the inside wall, and, and it looks like the right end plate has vacated the McLaren. Into the pits for pork chops, actually out of the pits, onto the hard compound, currently running 19th on his return to the division. Well, I say return, but he, he hasn't yet been out of the division, really, has he? <laughs> Checking in with Matt Rosie. He seems to have an intact wing, but he's falling back from Yolmir. I wonder if this is just a self-preservation run, waiting for any opportunities, safety car-wise, perhaps. So ever Same. since Mayomir led his teammate ahead, he's opened up that gap to three seconds now, just around four laps. Um, and Mayomir is actually under some intense pressure here from Helg for the last couple of laps. Helg has been ever so close to get an overtake on Mayomir, but just can't get the exact timing done. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. I can't see any damage on the front of that racing point, but perhaps he may have a little bit, because you would expect him to be, you know, up there following his teammate, as he mm -hmm. has in the past. In fact, he qualified him, did he not? Yes, he did. 
But yeah, he just got a lot of oversteer on turn 19. I think it was around lap three or four. And then let his teammate go by into turn one. And then Random Sirius has just been pulling away since. But we'll see. Maybe Mayomir can get into some sort of groove here. Well, Mayo's starting to become the Mayo train. If you look, he's got Helg, Bacon, Hash, and Jin uh, in relatively close proximity to each other behind him. <laughs> Reminiscent of Yano Trulli. I'd imagine Jin's going to try and poach Hash sometime soon here. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to force a manoeuvre around here. Hash, of course, is the highest driver currently on the medium compound tyre. So at some point, the softs will drop off and he'll begin to have an advantage over the guys around him. It may be around now, to be honest. Yeah, I was thinking that, actually. Nine laps have kind of snuck up on us. Pork, yeah, that you can see. Letting the drivers go by. responsibly there at Rash yeah. Cast, but it would not have been pleasant. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Poor guy. Tries to get out of Div 1 before Monaco, and then they just drags <laughs> him back in. <laughs> 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 he just he did what he can. I'm going to be respectful. It was a smart move, a veteran move. Yeah, guys, sorry. No, not good enough for Div 1. I'm going to drop down to Div 2. Maybe I'd take my chances there. And then what do you know? He's back in Div 1 to deal with Monaco. Intense pressure right now, um, help is putting on Mayo, as mm -hmm. we've noted already, but it's even closer now. It was too tense when I went on board, now it's a bit, obviously, um, exacerbated due to the, the fact that there's corners and you can't really follow that closely around every corner. But through the tunnel here, not much ERS on board with the Alpha Tauri driver, way more for the racing point. So maybe that's not actually the closest battle we're going to see. Ooh, oh, hell! A bit of oversteer there for Helg, and where's Bacon? And Is he close enough? No, no we're not out quite. Of that one. Yeah. Smart move by Bacon there. Also very low on ERS. All of these guys, in fact, scrolling through, not many are holding much in reserve at all, which is kind of surprising. Oh, Impossible's first into the pit. Okay, so this, this could be around the time for scheduled pit stops. If I was him, I'd be putting that. Well, I don't know if we can get them to the end, but it's a good it's a good idea for a risky strategy. Let's put it that way. If he can feed out into a place where he's got some space, that'll be key. And it actually looks like he has dropped himself into a decent gap just behind Nicky. Oh, you're right. Of Smith Pell. So this could be a masterstroke, getting in front of those two guys in front of him at least with the undercut. That would be um, ideal to get into fifth, honestly, for Bacon's race. I'd like we'll see to see... these guys pits, though. I'm curious about Maomir's splits here. I didn't catch his split in Sector 1. He's feeling the major pressure of Helgen behind. Hash has somewhat fallen back, but he should be able to bring himself back closer. Helg goes a little bit deep into 10. Mayo with a penalty there. That could be key by the end of the race. You've got to keep those penalties low, boys. Especially... Mm -hmm. You know, early in the race, before any safety cars potentially come out, you, you just can't afford that because you're going to get shuffled back so much at this track. And He's neither of those guys go into the pits. Do any of the following guys? Yeah, Jin. Jin, Jin follows his teammate a lap later. Smart Very move. smart, I'd say. Yeah. And onto the medium again. Well, okay, I've got to assume these guys believe they can make that last. Um, I think mm -hmm. I would have doubted myself, but I know a lot of that guys... A lot of drivers have better wear than I do, so we'll so see how that just, pans out. So going back to Mayomir's splits there, he was actually only 1.1 seconds down on his initial fastest lap, so himself is staying fairly consistent. But I did notice, uh, I can't remember, someone who was in that train was three seconds down on their fastest lap, so they are obviously being held up by this train set by Mayomir here. Mayomir's putting in, yeah, like, is, consistent oh, key laps. Key move, key move by Bacon, overtaking Nicky into Mirabeau, that was, and that was really important for his race. He needed to make that pass, otherwise the undercut would have been completely void. And I think Nicky gave that to him to a certain extent, but it was definitely a very committed and good move there from Bacon down the inside. And that uh, frees him up, but Jin is now behind that Ferrari, so... It'll also be key for him to make that move, otherwise the undercut for the second Mercedes will be void, and Nicky actually lets him through, so... 
I don't know if those three guys have something going on together, but that's very important for the Merc boys. So we're seeing a lot of pits now. Mailmere stays out. Uh, key thing here as well that Yol has gone for the hard compound, and Mayo just squeaks around the outside of him. This may slow up Yol, but Yol uh -oh. can push hard to the end of them. These other guys may have to do a bit of conserving, and look how slow Mayo is holding the McLaren up on those dead softs. Obviously not doing this on purpose, but just the way it's fallen, the LFR boys not quite working out for them perfectly. So who else pitted in that phase? Helg was in front, of course, of both Mercedes drivers and now falls behind, uh, including Nicky, which he now needs to... He, need, he needs to clear that uh, Ferrari, otherwise he might fail to um, undercut even Mayoma, and Hash will be a danger to him as well with the overcut. Matt uh, Rosie is pressuring the, uh, once again, disconnected car of Super. He should be able to get through on those fresh tyres. Hopefully there's no collision. That's tough. Tough Yul passing an AI-controlled car. Yolmir is absolutely draped all over Mayomir here. He needs him to pit. And there you go, Mayomir is into the pit. But and that's... Hash goes for one more. Oh, Hash is actually on the medium, of course. Mystic, let's see, yeah, five seconds now or added on to that gap between Mystic and Yolmir. was sitting at three for a while, but Mayomir hugely holding up Yolmir there. And Matt Rosie goes for the move on the AI, actually has to make a pretty nice move to get the job done. As even and the AI... To, because look how close Bacon is. Matt Rosie was well up the road from Bacon prior to the pit stop phase, and now Bacon is, well, he's close, but he's got that AI between them. That's the power of the undercut. Oh, oh, oh he was looking for it. Pork chops. Ooh, this is getting testy Bacon here. Bacon doing the right thing here, though, by being patient and not not jeopardizing his wing. He, he can see that Matt Rosie is getting away in front of him, but it's better to, to, to play it safe than to, oh. uh, to, to risk your wing. Oh, wow, that was, that was extremely tight. And in fact, the Mercedes tight. working well together. Jin comes through. And that was uh, Bacon letting him through for sure. No yeah. question about that. Mystic setting the fastest lap here. Nine seconds up the road to Yolmir. And I think you have to give Mystic credit. I, I believe that the, the best drivers out there will know when they can come out in front of all this traffic. And he'll have calculated that. He'll have seen where cars were. He'll have seen the gaps around him. And the pit rejoin, of course, that's um, displayed on the... Uh, you know, the, the multi-function display. And he'll have calculated that very well to know he would come out in clear air. Oh my, Ninas is super holding up Jin here. Jin just can't pick him off. He couldn't get enough of an... Ooh, wow. Oh, there he goes. Now he dives down. He's alongside and actually Super Ninas hits the tire and Jin's forcing him in, but the He's still there. bot wow. is just battling. Wow. And look at the time that's cost Jin to Matt. It's six seconds, and you got to think it was about two seconds one lap was, ago. Yeah, that was only a lap and a half, too. Now here, Bacon's looking to get it done on Ninas again, trying to get the slipstream through the tunnel. But Ninas just has this straight line speed. Oh, my God. It's actually really sad that we have to be commentating on AI defensive maneuvers, but this is the, what Codemasters has presented us with. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't like to be in these guys' positions. Oh, God, no. Looks like Mayomir was able to pick off Nikki there as well. So going long has not worked out for Mayo. He's down in 14th currently, and the drivers he was holding up in that long train before, many of them are either in front of him or yet to pit, as in Hash, obviously, starting on the mediums. Bacon's oh. left the session. Bacon's lagged out. Okay, I'll send him an invite. Oh, Helg was very close to Bacon. Oh my god, poor Helg. He's got two AIs to overtake here. Yeah, so that's really unfortunate. Bacon was having a great drive, actually. Moving up through the field, making some nice overtakes, making a really good undercut, working well with his teammate as well, but this is just oh, absolutely did you, destroyed his race. Did you invite um, Ninas? 
I have invited both of them. Okay. Oh, baking out a power surge. Yeah, he need Okay. Ah. Uh, well, you never know, Bacon. If he can get back in here, then, he says uh, he says he needs another one. Okay. And he hasn't really lost any positions, to be honest. He's just lost a bunch of time. Oh my God, any, poor any Helg. Any safety car that comes out now as well could, all, could also help his cause. Oh come on, Helg. Man, this is. You ever see that subreddit of people dying inside? Oh yeah. This is literally watching Helg's POV. Because it's not that he has one bot ahead of him, but he's got a bot ahead of him that gets yeah, DRS. and you can't send it on one as Oh, well. and then, oh, oh the no, this is... Oh, why did I... Commentator's curse. Meanwhile, if we want to go to a battle between two humans, we've got Random going down the inside of Swee now for P4. Makes it stick into the Nouvelle Chicane. Good move. Swee, of course, yet to pit. And... Let's his teammate through it at the same time. Classy so driving. Also working well together. Many um, teammates working very well together uh, in the last few weeks. Super Ninas is back in here. Um, that's very good. Hopefully, in fact, he's running eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, hmm. Uh, no pit yet, though. Okay. Uh, true, true. But any safety car could uh, reinsert him in within uh, with vigor into this race. Helg still right behind him, doesn't go for the pit lane. We know he's got some damage. Not sure how bad it is though. Mm. Uh, actually, no end plate on the left side for the Alpha Tauri. Yeah, honestly, it's. I just race it out. Smith Pell, I guess his teammates behind him. Let your teammate through, but then just I, I, I just race it out, make it impossible for Haytite Gaming to try and get by you. I think it's more worth to do that. Maybe take your chance that there might be a safety car and then you can take your pit stop then. Oh, for sure. Um, if it was me, I would uh, definitely not be pitting in his um, in his shoes at this track, that's for sure. So taking a peek at the pit stops here, the top two drivers, Mystic and Yolmir, have pitted. Hash still yet to in third. Random Series and Matt Rosie have pitted. The Sui teammate of Matt Rosie, sitting in six, has yet to pit. Jinnit to win it as well has pitted so he's on for a really good race here and he's working on Suwi but we'll see how long Suwi holds him up for before he's into the pit. So looking at the leaderboard Ooh, I think Twin, sorry one... has a move down into Ooh. turn one and gets the move done. Yeah, up into sixth place. That's very important for Jin now. He can try and work on chasing down Matt Rosie. See what he can get accomplished there. But yeah, finish your thought. Yeah, so Jin actually has been catching Matt in that time. Yeah, the gap is down to 3.5. It was 6 at one point, I think we noted. So, yeah, what I was going to say was that, looking at the leaderboard, we only have one driver who was on the podium last season in the race. Um, so that's random and serious. And, of course, right now, looks like he's in a net podium once again. So, I don't know if this guy is a bit of a, a uh, Monaco specialist, but he's certainly doing well once again for Racing Point. So importantly, Smith Pell and Haytite Gaming have, both have caught the back of Helg now. So I wonder if Helg and Smith Pell are in a party oh, together to discuss. Bacon's but back. Bacon is racing under human-controlled power, and is well, he's close to Super, but still unable to get past. And Matt Rosie's in first in spot. For another set of mediums, going for a two stop here. That's a wing change. And a wing, so, oh. Unscheduled stop for Matt. So, what does this do to the running order? It will promote to Jin. Sweet. Sweet, of course, yet to pit. Um, but will he come out in front of Super Ninas? That's the question. Here, Impossible's got a line, a move lined up into turn one, but oh no, oh goodness, it takes a shortcut and loses a little bit of his wing, gets a move done. Helg as well. That's a huge position gain for Helg. Now not stuck in behind the bot of Super Ninas. So now he'll look to break away from Super. Maybe to the point where... Oh, look at this train crash. Oh, Haytite Gaming down and a little bit of contact between him and Smith Pell forces Haytite to go Rally right at the... Wings. Oh my goodness. Smith Pell has lost out uh, several positions there as because of the move down by Haytite. 
into turn five. Smith was forced out wide. And then K. Thomas kind of pulling through the carnage of Smith Pell and getting the overtake going into 11th here. Matt will be absolutely ruining it to make that pit stop. He's come out right Oh, and now Hey Tight Gaming spun out. The wrong way. At the Nouvelle Chicane. Oh, no. All after kicking off in this group. Oh, wow. And Hey Tight has got it facing the right way, sort of. Back onto the track, he comes behind C Barry. Not rejoining Ooh. in an unsafe manner. Very Impossible good. pitting as well here. And there you uh, go. Who's that? Ninas finally right. into the pit. You know, if I were, if Smith Pell is rightfully pissed right now, Matt Rosie is as well, but Smith Pell was initially behind his teammate, and with that move, Helg was able to move past Ninas, and Smith Pell was on to try and work on the bot. These hards are fairly quick right now. Hey, Tate, Tate has retired. Mm. Smith Pell was on to make a move onto Super Ninas, but because of that chaos, that 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 chaos going into turn five, that's pushed Smith Pell in behind Cake Thomas now, and I'm not sure if he's got any damage to this wing, but he could be right up with his teammate six seconds up the road. And I'll tell you who this has worked out brilliantly for, and that's Swee. He's started the race on this current set of tyres that he's on, and he's just stayed out of trouble. And when mm -hmm. he pits. He'll be looking at coming out in seventh place. That's already seven places ad ad advanced from his grid slot. So that Renault doing an incredible job. Yeah, for Jin sure. Now on the back of a battle for third, Jin has caught Hash and Random Serious. Hash obviously yet to pit as well, um, but nevertheless, not obliged to let any of these gentlemen through. So this will be interesting. Ooh, now Matt Rosie's really working on Smith Pell. Nearly had a move into turn one. Smith Pell blocked it off. And coming up, Beau Ravage, nothing quite going. Maybe around the outside if it's there. He looks at it, but no room and wasn't close enough. But back to the battle for third place here. Oh, yellow flag in sector three. I think that may be Enrique. Enrique yeah, he was into at the, the back wall. Of pork chops, and I just clicked off it. He's got damage. He's spun himself back around with a nice flick spin. <laughs> Ooh, fishtailing a bit on the uh, rejoin, but yeah, that's unfortunate. The McLaren race is not going particularly well. After a very good qualifying, has to be said. Yeah. Top 10. It's just one of those days at the office. So you, lonely races up front for both Mystic and Yol. I guess I'll both be hoping that there's no safety car though, because. That might bring things oh, into and a it, bit more of a complicated and, scenario for Enrique them. Enrique spun out again at Casino, turn four. The hot tires not favouring him, and there's so many shards of carbon fibre coming off that McLaren. It's not funny. He lets Sweet through very responsibly once again. Oh dear, oh dear. Helg is catching Sweet though, so Sweet. Well, those tires have to make it a few more laps before he can put softs on. So, from his I don't see. Hopefully, he can keep a gap to Cake for that P7 re-emergence from the pits. If I were if I were his crew chief, which of course he doesn't have that, I'd I'd tell him to pit right now and take your chances with the hards. Oh, that's an interesting shout. But as long as he has that gap to come out in front of... Oh, the, a full-on uh, safety car here. It. Oh, we have a pile-up into turn one. Who is that? Oh my god, I'm just flicking through the drivers. Well, Porkchops is retired. Um, Porkchops are the two... The two Haas, I believe. Well, that's Super Ninas, isn't it? Super Ninas and Porkchops, yeah. I couldn't couldn't get on board with like, someone, but yeah, we have a safety car. Now this is really going to change things up here. We have a lot of drivers in the pit, um, including Jin, he's gone for mediums, Hash, don't like that choice, man. He's gone for the soft compound, and I think oh, he'll be struggling to make those last to the yeah, end. Yeah, that'll hurt. Um, let's have a look. Anyone else in the pits? Yes, we making his pit stop. Goes onto the hards, just as you advised. And he's right behind Cake Thomas. Ah, oh, that's heartbreak. So on the yellows, it was, yeah. He had to pit a few laps ago to make that work. Mm-hmm. Now, to be fair, I only just thought of that idea, so... 
<laughs> or else I would have messaged him. So we've got further drivers in the pits, a lot of them coming out on the medium compound, which obviously I think is the right choice at this point, if you're allowed to use them. So Hash wasn't, of course, neither was Swee. That's what I was talking about at the start of the race. You don't want to be caught out by these sort of Yomir is pitting choices. here. And he throws and on a, a has time fresh, fresh set of mediums. Uh, did Mystic pit? No, he's still on 12 lap old medium, so this could get real interesting. Right, we have a race on. <laughs> but will Random Series, Random Series, and Random comes behind Yolmir and Mystic, or sorry, Jinnet got a free pit, and he's on some fresh mediums as well. So now Random Series and Mystic Joker are both going to be under some crazy heat off the start with drivers behind mm, them on fresh yeah. tires. The only other driver on fresh mediums is Smith Pell in the top uh, in the top ten that is. Uh, we've got some uh, Cake Thomas now in the pits, so he'll be opting to do the same strategy that promotes Swee back up into seventh. So that did work out for Swee in the end. Um, depending on where Cake comes back out though, maybe Swee should have gone back in a, for a second set of uh, mediums. Yeah, because he's only lost one position. That is, of course, if Sway came in with two compounds available, two uh, of the medium compound available. Mm. Bacon in a fairly good position, having rejoined the race, of course, having pitted relatively recently for mediums and runs ninth. Um, Matt Rosie came out pretty bad from that, um, unfortunately for him, after those multiple pit stops on eight lap old mediums. They'll make it, but they're older than some of the cars in front of him and in 11th. Hash, I don't know if I like his chances, of course. The more time that we spend on the safety car here, the better it'll be for his tyre preservation. But, as we saw in that first stint, not many cars went further than like 11 laps on those tyres. Of course, the car's lighter now, so it will go a bit further. But, uh, I mean, there's still 14 laps to go. 15, actually, for him, sorry. I got a stat for you here, Crash. What do you think of this one? Five retirements so far this season. All cars that have retired are powered by Ferraris. Uh oh. There's a conspiracy going on here. Uh, you got to give me a second. I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take over. Okay, so Mystic has caught the safety car. We know he's on 13 lap mediums. Did not pit under the safety car probably cursing himself at this point although we know he has the ability to hold off drivers this is a track that's very difficult to pass on those tires will of course make the finish so not over not over by any shout but Yolmir with one lap old of course these aren't even one lap old really they've been under safety car conditions one lap used medium tires he'll be on the complete attack but he's got a lapped car actually he's got two lap cars between him and the race leader if not three, actually. <laughs> Goodness me. One, two, three. Wow, he's got... Hang on a second. Bacon in ninth is a lap down, so he's got... Ah, Mystic Not Pitting has actually affected a lot of these guys that will have not realised they were going to go a lap down if they pit under the safety car. Probably including Smith Pell and, uh, well, hard to tell who else given how long it's been since Matt Rosie's pit stop, for example. But he's a lap down, of course, having sat on the front row. So only eight cars on the lead lap here. A lot of them having to catch up as well. And there's lots of lap cars in between. So this is actually going to be interesting. Yol has to clear these guys. They have to be responsible. I'm sure all these guys will be, and we know they're a clean bunch of guys. But there's a lot of traffic. And where's Random in all this? How many cars behind Yol is he? Okay, so he's the car right behind Yol, albeit on 14 lap old tyres, just like Mystic's tyres. Jin, with a similar scenario, having pit under the safety car, is right behind Mayo. So Mayo's gone a lap down from his teammate, having out-qualified him and run well in top six at the start of the race. I've unfortunately missed what happened to Mayo, but something must have gone wrong for him. Safety car is in this lap, though. So we're about to go racing, and the order is all jumbled up, completely all jumbled up. 
Uh, Mystic doesn't have much to worry about behind him. He's got, I think, four lap cars between him and P2. He just needs to keep it clean and go to the end. And he goes out of the last corner. Bacon is the car behind him. Will he want to unlap himself? This actually becomes really complex. Do you let the guy in second come through? Or do you try and unlap yourself? Obviously you're on fresher tyres than the race leader. You're allowed to. Um, gee, this is going to be tough. Hash with a three second penalty. That could be key by the end of the race. I'll bring up the uh, penalty situation. In fact, everyone with a penalty has three seconds, with the exception of Enrique, who's currently running last, with 15 seconds, as Jin gets past the lap car. He's still got one more, though, to go before he can get onto the back of Random Sirius for that third place on the podium. Random himself is not able to pressure Yol, of course, with those older tyres. Yol is coming through. Stefron is allowing these guys to... In fact, he might be two laps down. Uh, as Barry gets a five second penalty for ignoring blue flags even though he's a lap up on the car that's behind him he might want to contest that um, Sephron needs to let uh, Yol through here at the earliest possible convenience very inconvenient to let anyone through here obviously at Monaco though so if he can get out of the way that would be really good yeah there it is a blue flag penalty for Sephron in that Williams uh, I don't want to say helping his teammate but it's Oh, Jinnit Twin has got a move lined up for Random Series here. Sorry, down the inside line, Random is trying to defend around the outside. Jinnit has to cut the corner a little bit, and that move to cut the corner might be the difference of him going into fourth place after all this is said and done. All Random has to do is stay close. Sorry, I'm back off the phone. Oh, oh collisions, and, and yep, yeah, I thought that might happen. Unfortunately, oh. Sephron was unable to let Yol through at a more convenient point for Yol. I don't know if Yol got damaged, but Jin certainly did, running into the back of Yol, who had to avoid the Williams. Now, ah, most most importantly here, Random got caught in behind Sephron City oh, here. Oh, Yol spins And out Yol spins, you. no, and he's gone. And he's retired. No, so, ah, oh, man. He was second in Canada in the season opener, and he was running second here tonight with a chance at catching Mystic. But unfortunately, retirement for the McLaren. Disaster for McLaren actually running last with the other car. And so that now... Was a, oh, yeah, go, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, four drivers involved in a very tight one-point separation battle for second in the championship. Yol was one of them, um, as, as well as Mayo, Random and Jin, and that's one of them out of the race. So, with... I'm not sure where Random got it, but he has lost his left end plate on his wing and now Jinnit has already been able to grow that gap above three and a half seconds because Random was hung up by Saffron City for a little bit there. And the effect of having four lap cars between yourself and the rest of the pack has allowed Mystic to get 10 seconds in front after yeah. that safety car despite having 11 lap older tyres than the man in second place. So can Jin catch up? That's the question. I'm going to say it's kind of unlikely. He needs a second a lap and an overtake, uh, plus three seconds for his penalty. So, so you're the saying there's a he's chance? Looking pretty good. No, <laughs> I'm, saying, <laughs> I'm saying Mystic needs to make a mistake. I think Jin though is looking good to move from 15th to second, which would be a mammoth um, driver of the day effort, I'd say. Oh, he just clipped the wall though. Did he get any further damage? Uh oh. Hard to tell. Yeah, he he's already actually... has that damage that we noticed before, so... Yeah, okay. Yeah, in fact, Mystic is uh, you know, elongating that gap, so I'd say Mystic, it's his race to lose at this point. Hash is putting a lot of pressure on Random Sirius. Trying to get onto Hash the podium. Hash, needs to make this move because for his tyres, uh, you know, say, no more, please. <laughs> he's the only driver on soft at the moment. Yeah, and those are seven laps Kate deep Thomas, now. Who was way back, having pitted on either lap one or lap two, and yeah. now he's running fifth. Have you noticed as well, Crash? There's only seven drivers in the lead lap. Yeah. Mystic, with not pitting, trapped a couple of those guys who pitted um, unawares. 
Oh, and Hash. Oh, and Hash and Random Series get into it, and Random gets spun out as this back left tire hits the inside curb. Oh, what is gonna happen there? Oh, they were able to. Oh God. Now Random then Series has dropped all the way back wing. to seventh. Yeah. Ouch. Portions of front wing for both Hash and Random have come off. At least for Random's sake, he'll be still seventh after the pit stop if he chooses to make one here because yeah. of the gap back to Matt. But still, he was running in P3, looking good for it as well, given the um, oh. the tyre on Hash's car. But yeah, now Cake Thomas in fourth. So he'll be looking at the podium now. Yeah, especially if one of those softs are wearing off for Hash, which will be fairly soon here. It was around lap 11 to lap 12 that we started seeing drivers pit away from those softs. As long as Kate keeps his nose clean, he could be on for a podium. Oh, that's really painful for Random Sirius. He was the only driver on the lead lap with the exception of Mystic without a penalty. So he was looking to move up um, with that sort of tactic uh, by the end of the race. But now he's in a... Well, he's kind of by himself, really. He's not close to Helg at all. Well, to be fair, he had the he had the cushion of no penalties when all the other drivers around him had penalties, so even being overtaken wasn't the worst thing. But that, yeah, That's what I was saying. That yeah. was what he was trying to do, but I yeah. it doesn't look like he's close enough to benefit anymore. Yeah, Jinnit Jin was too far gone at that point. And we'll see if Kate Thomas can get a move into turn one. It looks like he's a little too far away from Hash here. But he'll know those tyres are old, and um, mm. if he's got a wise head on his, on his shoulders, as I am sure he does, he'll just wait, and the Hash is going to have some issues very soon on those tyres. So Random has just come into the pit now. Of course, five points on offer for the fastest lap, and I imagine he's well capable of doing so if he comes out on softs, which it does look like he has fitted in that racing point. And of course, if these guys battle too much, he could catch up, for all we know, and benefit from those penalties once again. Man, do you think we're nearing the point of having to ban Monaco from our calendar. Have you not found this exciting crash? I have, but um, from, I'm, I'm fine. I, I enjoy it. But the thing is, is that... Oh, oh Helg, is, Helg might have a move on Sui. He's right alongside... Sui defends very well. Oh, but oh and Helg oh. goes for a switchback oh. and then smacks the wall, but it's got not a the lot most of effective switchback I've ever seen unfortunately no. didn't look like he got too much damage oh actually he does have a lot yeah. of damage and into yeah. the wall again he's got a free pit though he'll be struggling though. to stay in front of random serious oh actually he's got a, quite a big gap he needs the pit though ASAP yeah. to preserve that gap and potentially go for fastest lap himself no so the reason why I bring that up is because I, I see a lot of people losing their minds out of some of the the shenanigans that happen on track that are amplified when we race here because of the uh, because of how tight the circuit is. If you understand what I'm saying. Well, I think that would be a great shame if Monaco were to be struck from the calendar because, I mean, <laughs> sure, you got you got to have drivers who are patient enough, and um, I think you'll have seen last season. A couple of us got stuck behind C. Barry, who was yet to pit, and we, we stayed there. And, yeah. You know, you just have to be patient. I think the only thing that really affected this really in a bad light was the um, the disconnected cars getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So looking at penalties, Helg actually picked up another three second penalty at now nine seconds. Did he pit? Yes. And onto the softs he goes. Um, Random serious was catching, but I think he just hit the wall. So yeah, yeah he's, got... he's lost the left hand end plate. So maybe that. Oh, he still gets fastest lap though. Well, <laughs> have to see what Hell can. Do. That is an interesting one. See what Hell can do though.
Where are our gaps? So Mystic is still extending the gap. It's currently 16 seconds over Jin. Cake's really putting pressure on Hash, but yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, that, that was the finish of the thought. Um, Hash, yeah. This, these three are battling for that last position on the podium. And who's your money on, Crash? I can tell you that all three of them have three seconds of penalty, so they're even on that regard. Oh, here we go. Well, I mean, oh. I didn't even have time to make a decision as Cake is looking at the outside line. A little bit of contact between him and Hash, and Hash holds it, but Cake gets a really good run out of the turn up Beau Rivage, wheel to wheel. Cake's got the outside line oh, lined up bang. here. And, and that yeah, was coming. And, I, yeah. oh, and, and Sway runs into it, unfortunately. A big no, T-bone sets Sui Hash the right way. Out. But <laughs> Sway now has damage as well. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Oh, and he's demolished Hash <laughs> in the rear. <laughs> oh, I was going to say Sway was having a really good race, but that's kind of undone it a little bit. He's lost his front wing. Hash is carrying it, I believe. Is that a Renault front wing he's got? <laughs> or is that his own? Front wing's yeah, everywhere, basically, at Mirambo. Sephron's letting him back through, but he's got, <laughs> he's got damage. Nikki's wondering what the hell to do at this point. Um, a lap down, but in the top ten for Nikki, so not such a bad race, all considered. Got two really quick drivers. It's a virtual him. safety car, I should note as well. Yeah. Um, fastest lap right now is a 111.9. So, pretty much, arguably, uh, the tantalizing thing here is Mystic is almost at that gap where he could pit and go for the fastest lap, but it's too risky with Jin that close. Oh, and Nikki loses a little bit of his wing as well. Sweet into, into the pits. As well as Hash. Has his Hash. And they're actually going to come out behind Random and Held. So Cake Thomas looking fairly well set now for that third position on the podium. Mm -hmm. And it has to be said, looking back on it, a fairly decent move around the outside going up towards Massonet. Unfortunately, there was contact. Uh, it's hard to tell if he turned in or if it was um, Hash's running wide into him, but either way, he got it done and looking at a podium for the first time in Division 1. Jacko, I know that you're multicultural and whatnot, but you have to pronounce it Massonet. This is an American league, okay? No, Massonet. Come, come on, up, come on. Come on. It's not Renault. Come on. Uh, is it? No. Is no, it? this is a French-speaking country. It's clearly Massonet. I'm just playing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm annoyed. You're uh, Canadian. You should, oh, you should be okay you, with eh? this. Um, yeah, do, okay, I'm Canadian, but like, <laughs> Quebec doesn't even call themselves Canadian, okay? There's a long history there. Alright, well let's have a look what's happening with the random series. Still without a penalty, he's actually looking at overtaking Hell. Because um, Helk has nine seconds of penalties, so position four still on for random series here. No, I see a potential podium pending on penalties here. As there's the fastest lap for Helg though. That I don't know if that's going to be beaten. An eleven yeah. seven beats him by just under two tenths. But well, Hash uh, and Sui have a ch have a chance to beat that, as does Mayo, because they've all pitted one lap ago for softs. Now I'm just gonna scratch my thought. I think Cake, even even if he does get a penalty for that contact earlier, he should be safe with the podium. You'd imagine with a 22 second gap, he would be safe no yeah. matter what. Uh, you can't say that. No matter what, what if he hits a wall? Oh, a lot of I thought you meant penalty-wise. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're got a lot of separation between the drivers here. There's a looks like there's two Honda-powered cars coming through turn seven, but that's oh no, what we got a Ferrari and an Alfatari, but yeah, I mean no true battles here. Enrique picking up a penalty. Good on him for toughing it out, that. though. You gotta, you yeah. gotta, you gotta tip your cap. 
Unfortunately for Enrique, that does say 31 seconds of penalties. Which is a lot. <laughs> well, he's still safe to Saffron City. <laughs> <laughs> and Mayo sets the fastest lap, running in 13th currently. Obviously the pole stood last week. And on the podium, not having the greatest race, but at least there's those five points of compensation. If it stands, that is. Well, we're on to the final lap here. Mystic will ride on board with him throughout this final entire lap as he's just finishing up Sector 1. Only five tenths down on his initial fastest lap through Sector 1. So he's uh, working his way through with 27 lap old tires. One of three drivers with no penalties. Uh, what's going on there? That was Matt Rosie. Um... Nicky overtook him, there was the yellow flag, and now he's let random through, a lap down, and he's entering the pits. So I believe that's the front wing. And I'm actually going to monitor this battle for fourth, because Helg is flying away from random series. Random obviously with that damage. He needs nine second gap, it's currently 7.4 on their last lap. So that'll be key for P4. Yeah, Helg's really putting in some times here. I'm, uh, I'm wondering when we're going to see a Helg podium. He's definitely quick enough to get it done. But there we go. We got Mystic Joker coming over the line for the win in Monaco. Congratulations and breaks the curse that Jacko was keeping a tight uh, hold yes. on. Look how close Cake's got to Jin all of a sudden. What's happened there? Yeah, very Jin true. Jin holds on for second place. Cake does finish in third. And oh, oh hell! With the wall for Helg. Yeah, and that'll be it for him. Unless Random picks up a penalty here, I don't know how many warnings he's got, but he's going to keep it careful. Yeah, he keeps it very careful through the chicane of 15 and 16, and he's just going to finish up. Helg's about to come over the line on track fourth, but should drop down into fifth. And some penalties being served out. Smith Pell finishing in eighth, Seabury in ninth. Random does get the jump up back into fourth. Little, little, maybe not a little bit. A very unlucky from Random here today, but still fourth place is a very solid drive. Moves up two positions from his initial start. So who do you want to bring in for the interviews here? Of course the podium, but who's your final, final driver here? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, what's our usual criteria? The uh, fastest lap, is it? Or... No, it's Heart, hardest charger. Hardest That'll be charger. Jin for sure. So... Yeah. Um, well, actually, does Jin get credit for 10th a second or 15th, given he had a five place penalty? I think he's safe anyway, because I think 7 was the highest improved. So... Okay. Still 8. That's how good he did today, <laughs> simply put. Yeah, he'd get my drive of the day. Um, up to you, honestly, Crash. I don't know. I was thinking Sui. Maybe we'll get the brothers in. Okay, sounds good to me. But I'll go Try through the... to mention the, um, the old front wing loss there towards the end. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, we'll go through the final order here. Starting first, finishing first, breaking the curse is Mystic Joker. Second is Jinna to win it. Third, Cake Thomas. Congratulations to the podiums. And on to the rest, we see Random Sirius going from sixth to fourth. Helg matching his qualifying and staying in fifth throughout. Hash moving up a respectable five positions into sixth. Su Wee going from 14th to seventh and was nearing a hardest charger, but without the heroics of Jinna to win it, unfortunately. That is the difference there. Smith Pell dropping down a position into eighth. Seabury finishing in ninth and rounding out the top ten is impossible. Bacon was somewhat of an unlucky race from him as well. Nikki steady through and through, going from sixteenth to eleventh. Mail Mirror starting fourth and finishing twelfth with the hardest with the fastest lap, sorry. Matt Rosie, not what he was hoping for, his debut into thirteenth. Enrique toughing it out in fourteenth. Saffron City doing somewhat of the same in fifteenth. And onto the DNF. We see Yulmir. Jesus Christ. Oh God! Stop it! Whose mic is that? Cake? 
Okay. Ironically, we have a static hazard in the booth here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there you go. But okay, DNFs to Yolmir, Super Ninas, Pork Chops, Hey Tight Gaming, and JC Blackley. Getting a Good little bit of feedback. Shout out to the three guys who finished without um, penalties as well. That's Mystic, Random, and Smith Pell, I believe. Great efforts we... by those guys to keep it clean. Well, well, there's four people that DNF that finished without penalties. You didn't no, call that. They did not finish. That, that's yeah. DNF. Did not finish. I see. Well, I see. I hear finish in it. <laughs> what about the did not? What? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I get our oh, discharger? I do, don't I? Yeah, I, I believe you I got it. I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> I'm no, you will. The grid, pen, the grid penalty might have, have affected it, like. No, no. Well, even with the grid. That, but yeah. I think no matter oh my... what, it's the same. You're, you're still um, hardest charger. Yeah, you would have went okay. from tenth to second. Which is eight places, and Sui got seven, and he was the second most. So you're safe either way. Okay. So well done. Thank you. But do we have everyone That's here? That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Got Mystic Kake, Jacko. No, Jacko. Keep thinking he's racing. Me, Mystic Kake. Waiting for Sui. Waiting for Sui. Mystic, go get Sui on. <laughs> I don't even know if he's what he's doing. <laughs> we'll go into his room and smack him. You assume <coughs> they live together. <laughs> no, I mean they could. There's a possibility. You can't tell me that there isn't a possibility. Uh, I'm not. I'm not making any assumptions, Crash. <laughs> Well, anywho, I guess while we're waiting for Sui, we'll spin it over to our winner here, Mystic Joker. Oh, uh, Jacko, can you invite Sui? No problem. Okay, cheers. We'll start with Mystic here. Mystic, you broke the curse. You started pole and won the race. Uh, were you at all nervous when that safety car came around? I guess when it initially happened, but then when you realized they had like three cars between second place, probably felt a lot safer, so I guess I answered that question for you. Um, <laughs> how was it, man? How was it? You're kind of on your own today. How was the, what, what was going through your mind throughout the race? Yeah, I mean, uh, got a okay start. I, I caught a little bit of wheel spin, like, in the second phase of, of the launch, but um, still managed to stay ahead and just kind of you know, get into a rhythm, um, and just keeping it clean. I was actually pretty upset when I was upset. So for not not because like we were gonna all get bunched up again, but because at the time that the safety car came out, uh, I had like a 21 second gap, and it was still growing. And I was hoping that towards a little bit like towards the end of the race I, <laughs> I would just get a free pit stop and I was gonna pit onto the softs and try to get fastest lap. So when that happened that kinda threw that, that idea out the window so I was kinda upset uh because of that. But no, I mean when the safety car came out, um you know, yeah, it was it was gonna add a little bit extra pressure again, but you know, I felt confident, felt good. Um my tires were still feeling pretty uh good at that point, so you know, it was just uh, going to be game on again, I guess. And um, Yeah, uh, quality, I, w I wasn't happy with my quality lap at all. I was pretty upset with my last two attempts. Uh, they got messed <coughs> up for different reasons or whatever, but uh, yeah, because I, I definitely could have broken into the 108s. I was kind of uh, upset by that. <laughs> where, do you, where were you losing time in, in those? Uh, well, my second to last attempt, I got held up by someone that was in their menus. Their car was an AI, and I came up to them, coming up to the hairpin. And so that lap pretty much got thrown out the window. Because uh, if I would have kept pushing the way that I was, I would have just had to slam on the brakes anyways. Uh, and then the final attempt, uh, there was an incident. 
early on in the lap and I couldn't really take the normal line that I, that I wanted to and lost a bit of time. That was quite unfortunate. Yeah. I was, it was a good race though. Enjoyed it. Good on you. Any questions from you, Jacko? Yeah, I was going to say, was there ever any, you know, doubt about whether those tyres were going to make it to the end when you initially pitted? You were the only car to one stop that finished the race. Obviously, pitting under the safety car would have been ideal, I would have thought, but um, maybe you didn't have that opportunity. Um, I mean, at that time, I, I would have only had uh, softs or hards to go on to because I chose yeah. the softer compound. So that would have been pointless. I didn't want to take the softs. And, and risk uh, that, and I didn't want to get onto the hearts. But yeah, uh, the plan was always soft to medium. Never any doubt uh, on that strategy. Yeah, and we were right there, Crash. The, the, some people only had one set of mediums. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well done. That was actually you, not me being right, but yeah. Like Collectively, we were right. <laughs> yeah, a, a cohesive unit was what we are. <laughs> But anywho, congratulations to you, Mystic. Hopefully we'll be seeing you back in the booth uh, come next week. That being in... Silverstone. Silverstone, yes, yeah, so there we go. But yeah, good job. On to Jinnit to win it. Hardest charger, as well as a second place podium for you. Tell us kind of what went through your mind starting off with your qualifying intent, what went wrong for you to be put back there. As well as well, the five second or the five place grid penalty. The the slightest of touches on Random's car. Did he DNF there? I'm not sure whether he was he DNF'd or he was just sideways, but the slightest of touches got me a five second. And Sephron was holding me up for pretty much since the hairpin. And obviously he, he just sat messaged me saying he was on a hot lap as well. So mm. it's one of them. Yeah. Emailed me up coming through to back with dirty air and me not seeing random until Sephron's gone past him kind of kind of sucked and then I couldn't hook my last lap up. So mm. there we go. go. Yeah, it just didn't didn't go your way, hey. We were very surprised to see you back in tenth. But you had an admirable job of getting yourself on the podium. What went right for you to get there? Just avoiding other people's mistakes. Getting the undercut on a few people as well, that helped. Yeah. Gave me more free air, catching up to others, and obviously just people making mistakes. It's always bound to happen at Monaco. Yeah, very true, very true. Anything from you, Jacko? Yeah, I was going to say, it's a fantastic driver, easily driver of the day for me. Um, but I also want to know, what happened at the end of qualifying for you to end up at Casino facing the wrong way with a tyre dangling off to the on the right side? What happened there? Uh, Oh, I just lost it through Massano. I lost the rear and I ended up touching the wall and I'm, and it just stuck me sideways. And then, yeah, I'm guessing he was on a hot lap, but obviously not looking at his track map. Just come steaming into me. And there's nothing I can do there. Ah, uh, I see. I'm pretty I wondered much blocking what happened because I saw the two cars in the aftermath, but not the actual event that occurred. So, what a, what a great recovery, though. Uh, absolutely, congratulations. And um, that undercut spot on and I believe good team work once again with Bacon I saw yep. him um, allow you through at one stage so yeah are you guys in a party you... now yeah yeah there that's you go that's exactly what I was going to ask Crash god <laughs> damn it <laughs> I was Sorry. waiting for that <laughs> it's my it's my <laughs> rudeness yeah, fantastic teamwork and Miss Lady is emulating real life with um, the great teamwork I have to say oh, well you. done but anywho congratulations and we'll get on to our third place finisher Keg Thomas what led you to get onto the podium here, man? You had a you had a very consistent race and kind of woke up at the end there. Um, I don't know, man. I just kind of rolled with what happened in the race and found myself on the podium at the end. I honestly don't know what happened. Honestly, kind of seemed that way from me. I mean, you just, like I said, you just kind of were out there racing and then you found yourself up fighting for a podium. Then, hey, there you go. You're standing on it. But, I mean, tell us kind of what went through your entire race there. Uh, at the start, I got off to a decent start, but then I got wing damage, somebody spun, um, so I pit early onto the hards, and I was just running them, and it didn't really seem like I was gaining any spots, I was stuck behind a Alpha Tauri and a Ferrari for about 20 some laps, but after I was able to clear them, uh, that safety car really helped me, 
I was I was able to get a free pit stop and get off the hard tires, go on the fresh mediums. And then from that point, I just tried to put my head down and do what I can. I had a pretty interesting battle and a uh, hard fought battle with Hash for about 10 or 15 laps. I ended up getting around him and then I just tried to uh, stay as clean as possible for the end and I was able to not hit the wall at all, so that was good. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go. It worked out. Anything for you, Jacko? Well, just a big congratulations to uh, to Cake on that one. Early on, it looked like Red Bull were down and out with both drivers pitting early for for hard, hard tyres. But uh, yeah, congratulations, Cake. That is that your I think that's your first Division One podium, is it? No. Yeah, that's my first one. Thank you very much, Jacko. Well done. But anywho, on to Sue Wee, who. Jacko and I both had our eyes on for the, quite a bit of the race up until you kind of ran into a little bit of trouble there, but you worked yourself back up into seventh place. Um, quickly before we get into it, I think this is your first time into the party. Can you make sure that you got your uh, voice settings on share? Okay, I do. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, we're good? Okay. Um, but anywho... You found yourself from 14th to the 7th. You stayed out of quite a while on the mediums to start, and we're in a really good spot. Um, was that your strategy from the start? Uh, going into qualifying, I was going to start on softs and then go to mediums. But once I got out of the top 10, I pretty much just changed it up and decided to go medium soft. That was, um, I could just try to gain some positions at the end, and as well as not mess up uh, Matt Rosie's strategy since he was going soft medium. So they didn't want to tangle that up and just decided to change it up. Yeah, well there you go. I mean, yeah, very consistent race. This is one of those um, one of those nights, I guess I can actually say, at Monaco where you're just uh, keeping your nose clean definitely uh, it helps you move up the grid at the end. But uh, anything from you there, Jacko? Um, well, it was a good showing there for, from you, Sweet, there. Um, unfortunate what happened at the end. Do you have anything to, um, to say on what happened there? Um, so I saw Cake and um, Hash battling, and I, I was trying to catch up a bit, but I kind of backed off at the same time because Cake was a little bit jumpy with leg. Uh, but once I did decide to try to go for it, to try to get on the podium, uh, I saw that they crashed and I had absolutely nowhere to go so I just completely broke the right side of my wing um, and then as I was looking at my wing damage I completely missed the break and uh, I went to the back of Hash and sent him around so I had to go in and pit but luckily we stayed able to keep a good position yeah. I see yeah that's basically what we saw unfortunate the way that panned out but um admirable that you um you said basically as what you just said there and uh, bad luck i guess moving on to the next one though um how do you feel about your chances uh, going ahead more, more top tens for you i'm hoping so I'm, I'm hoping to just keep my pace consistent try to get up there and stay in top ten sounds good hopefully we'll see you again in the uh post-race party I hope so. Exactly that. Yeah, thanks for hearing from you, Sui. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be yeah, that's gonna be it for us here in the Midwest F1 League for this evening. Any last final thoughts from the drivers here before I kick it to Jacko? Now you're good. I'm good. We're all good. Good to hear. All right. But yeah, that's it for us here in Monaco. Um, I'll get on to my final thoughts just before Jacko says his, or just after Jacko says his. Jacko, take it away. Well, final thoughts. Monaco, once again, was very entertaining. Obviously, we had a couple of uh, little indiscretions, um, but that's that's what Monaco is, and that's why we love it. So I'm um, looking forward to the next race, which will be Silverstone, and uh, that was a good race last season as well. So enjoying it once again in this, um, that's my third race as commentator, and um, hoping to make it a few more. There See you, you next go. week, guys. Exactly that, and uh, I believe Silverstone was actually the first race that Mystic ever raced for the us in the Midwest F1 League. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think, I remember a double podium when you filled in with the Renault with uh, Cam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go, yeah, look at that. 
I've got a good memory. So All right. Some unfinished business there. Oh, hey, wow. there you go. There you go. But yeah, that is it for us here tonight. Like we've just said, we'll be here next week in Silverstone. Uh, I'm not sure if tomorrow night we'll be live with our Friday Night Madness, but if so, be sure to check that out. If not, go take a peek at what we have to offer on the YouTube channel as well as our Twitter and Instagram page if you have any times. If you like what she saw, be sure to shoot us a follow. And by all means, stop by every time that we do go live, which that being Wednesdays and Thursdays, and then sometimes Fridays. So hopefully we'll be seeing you then. You have a good rest of your Thursday. I will be personally seeing you on Wednesday, but hopefully you can see Will Lance tomorrow. But that is it for us here. Please have a good rest of your night. I've been Crash with Queen. I'm, of course, joined by my co-host, Elma Jacko, or Jacko for short. We've been the Midwest F1 League, and good night. All right.